Hey everybody, it's Nathan Cool with NathanCoolPhoto.com, and in this tutorial, I wanted to cover histograms. Now, one of the things I covered in my recent ebook was on how to use histograms to your advantage to try to get a good exposure while you're shooting real estate. Histograms are also something good to know for just about everything that you're shooting. If you're doing portraits, you're doing products, obviously, I recommend using a light meter. I do that all the time. In fact, for this video, I even used the light meter to make sure that my lighting was correct. But when you're shooting real estate, you got to move fairly quick, and there's histograms that you can use to your advantage. And Quickly change your exposure based on what you see, but what does that represent? Now, if you've done statistics or you studied math in college, you definitely know what a histogram is. And if you've used your camera, you might know as well. But how do you use that really to your advantage? And the most important thing is they're all going to be different. Now, one of the things that I covered in my ebook, which by the way, you can click on that little uh, information icon up here in the uh, in the top right, and you'll be able to get some information on getting that ebook of mine. And also, I've got a link to it uh, in the description here for this video. But histograms will vary depending on uh, your camera. They'll vary on the pieces of software that you're using as well. And not all histograms are created equal, but if you get to know what those histograms are on the different pieces of software, then you'll have a better idea on how to use them, not just while you're shooting, but also while you're doing post-processing as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover uh, histograms that are in Lightroom and in Photoshop and also OEM software for Nikon, which is uh, the Capture uh, NXD and also View NXI. Now Canon, uh, Sony, they all have their OEM software for editing for viewing and they have histograms as well. What I'm going to do though is I'm going to start out showing the OEM software since that's actually more powerful than what you'd see in Lightroom. It'll also help me to explain those histograms just a little bit better but don't worry we're going to end on a high note which is going to be Lightroom which it's a little bit deficient in the uh, histogram view that it has but it also has some neat tricks in it that you can use to your advantage. Are you ready to get started? Let's take a look. So let's start off by taking a look at a histogram in Capture NXD. Now this is Nikon's OEM software. So this is something that looks a lot like Lightroom if you, if you look at it, um, but it's not. Uh, Lightroom has its own uh, Adobe stuff, but this is what you'd see almost true out of camera. The important thing though, just like on just about every other piece of software is that you've got this histogram up on the top right. Now that's a little window. What does it actually mean? Well. The important part is how it actually displays across here. And to see that better, we really got to blow it up. And this is what I love about Capture NXD. One of the many things is that I can go over here and I can undock that entire histogram. Now I can actually see a full view of it. Now it becomes a lot easier to explain. So if we go from left to right, what this is, this is exposure. On the left would be almost no exposure. And on the right would be overexposure. And so in between here, these are the different exposures and the different colors here, they're the different amount of color. So here we've got blue and it's going, yeah, we've got quite a bit of blue here uh, on this portion of the exposure scale. When we get into the reds, we see a lot of reds that are a little bit past mid exposure. Where it gets confusing across the different pieces of software is when we see this white area in here. That varies. In Capture NXD and a lot of other programs, that means brightness. So I can also in Capture NXD just show what What's the brightness amount? And to me, that's most important for doing real estate photography because one of the things you might recall from my ebook is I'm trying to get center to right of center. And here we can see this is center, and I'm in center right to center. So this is actually a fairly well exposed shot. Now, this is a shot just for ambient. If you take a look here, this is just the ambient shot. So let me go ahead and dock this back in there and boom, we've got that. Let's take a look at it also in another piece of a uh, software by uh, Nikon. This is their View NXD. And you can see pretty much the same type of histogram. And another thing I love about their histogram is I can break it apart into the various RGB and also brightness and keep that on the screen. And now I can see, yeah, we've got a lot of reds. This is how much green I've got, how much blues. But the most important thing really for real estate photography is what is the brightness? What is the luminosity? And that's this lower run right here. If I go to the finished product out of this, by the way, we can see that we've got a pretty good, it's actually starting to push a little high into the high exposure range here. If you look at the exposure part of it, the histogram, and that's really kind of pushing a little bit. I'd probably bring it down 
down now that I have some second thoughts about it, but we're still about center to right of center, and the color range is pretty good across. That's just out of luck pretty much out of this particular um, shot, because they all do vary. In fact, if we went to just uh, the flash exposure of it, we can see, yeah, there's a lot of flash here. We got dark in the background, and that's why it varies a little bit here, but the take-home point is that we want to try to judge that histogram to show the exposure from center to right of center, just like I talked about in my ebook. So now let's move ahead and take a look at Photoshop, which is pretty much real quick to get through. They've got a terrible histogram. Uh, Photoshop has this little itty bitty window. If you click on this thing, or you can go to Window Histogram to bring it up, and it shows all the various colors, or you could show RGB, or you can show the luminosity. Not bad, that's really good, makes a lot of sense, but it's such a small window, it's kind of hard to see. So it does work okay, it's not the best for really uh, judging exposure and all that, but it does work, it is there if you do need to use it. But of course, most of us spend a lot of time in Lightroom, and so when we take a look at Lightroom's histogram, it looks different. This is not the same histogram, and there's two reasons for that. First reason is Lightroom interprets the raw file from the camera differently, something known as a debayering algorithm. And so it's interpreting that file slightly different, so the histogram will be off somewhat. But the biggest thing here is that Lightroom, for some reason, decided that it's best not to use luminosity for that white front color, in this case it's kind of gray, but instead theirs uses an overlap. So wherever colors are overlapping, that's where they put their gray in there, which to me makes no sense at all. But Lightroom has something very useful. You can see that there's a little icon up here, a little triangle, and if I touch that triangle up here on the right, see that red starting to show up? I can click that and it'll keep it on. That's showing me the clipping range. So at the far right end of the histogram, that's our high exposure. At the other end, remember, is low exposure. So when we're in the clipping range, that means that there's not enough detail to be preserved. Now, for me, that doesn't really matter so much. And reason being is, this is an ambient shot. I'm gonna be blending that with a flash shot, and then I wouldn't have to worry about that, and there is no clipping there. But notice here, another clipping showed up here on the other side. That's our blacks, right? And those blacks are just hidden down in the furniture and down in some of the shadows, and it's not really that bad. Once again, our finished shot out of this was this exposure. But using the histogram in Lightroom, it's not just, oh, do I have a good exposure, but how do I change it? So let's take a look at some shots here. Now, if I take this shot back to where it was, where I imported it, I overexposed this when I shot it. It obviously looks overexposed, but the true tell of it is when you take a look at the histogram. Now, if you're on site and you're moving very quick, whether you're using a cam ranger or just the back of your camera, you can see a histogram. That's gonna tell you much better than glare going all over your tablet or over the back of your screen. It's always hard to tell. In this case, I was rushing and I thought that I was just right of center, but I wasn't, I was way up to the high. Now, that doesn't matter so much for me, because what I can do, this is a raw file, I can go down to exposure and go just lower that exposure by, you know, what I did was 0.7. That lowered the exposure, I didn't lose any quality out of that, it's a raw file, I can easily go a stop or more, and since it was overexposed, I didn't have to worry about shadows that might be corrupted um, with noise and all that, which tends to happen, so anytime time it's a little over bright, you can always lower it down and not worry about as much noise. But here's another trick you can do also. By the way, this hot spot up here was fixed with a composite shot later that was uh, me holding a, 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 just a little speed light over here to fill that in on my final composite. But there's another trick you can do, and that's where you can grab pieces of the histogram in Lightroom. So let's say that I wanted to uh, change the highlights. I go all the way over to the right, and I can change the highlights by moving that. Now if you watch what's happening, it's actually moving the white slider. Um, if I move into another section, there we go, there it's moving the highlight slider. Okay, see that highlight slider moving back and forth? I'm dragging on the histogram. If I grab in the center here, it's grabbing the exposure and changing the exposure that I need to. That's kind of a neat party trick. I mean, I don't find that really useful. You might though, because I can change the highlights slider and I can watch the histogram move itself. So it's dynamic enough for me. And most of the time though, I wanna have enough control where I'm gonna put in the exact amount that I wanna use. But once again, it's the same as any other histogram on the right, We've got our high exposure. On the left, we've got our low exposure. And for real estate photography, what we're after is something that's kind of right about center to right of center, so we have a fairly well exposed shot. 
So anyways, in my ebook, when I keep talking about to be center, to be right of center, that's what I'm talking about on that histogram. And I show that in the ebook as well. But I'm going to go further upon that subject on the advanced book that I'm still working on right now. And I hope to have it out, hopefully by the holidays. And I'll be elaborating more on everything that I just showed you. But for right now, you can go ahead and play around with it a little bit. Shoot some stuff. See how it works on the various pieces of software you have and how it compares on your camera. On the back of your camera, if you're not used to viewing histograms, when you take a picture on Nikons, usually while you're viewing a picture, you can hit that little up on the thumb wheel and it'll show them a histogram view and hitting the down uh, thumb wheel will make that go away. I believe on Canons, it's hitting the info button. On every camera though, you just look at your manual, see what the instructions are for viewing your histogram. And then as you're shooting, you can start seeing how that histogram is working. And if you go a little too high, that's okay. You're shooting in raw, you should be shooting in raw. And if, as long as you're shooting in raw, you can drop that a little bit and you can watch that histogram exposure also go down with it. Anyways, get familiar with the histograms on the various pieces of software that you have and you'll thank yourself later because if you're editing in a dark room, a darkish room, I shouldn't say dark room, use of photography, but a darkish room or a light, too light of a room, you can't be guaranteed that what you're going to see is what everybody else will. They'll also have somewhat of a subjective experience depending on the amount of ambient light surrounding either their tablet, their phone, or whatever they're viewing the pictures on, especially when it comes to print. So do some exposure validation with the histograms and you've got something to go back with then to your client if they complain and go it's too washed out or it's too dark or it's too bright you can actually prove that maybe it wasn't. Anyways I hope this uh, video was very useful for you and that you can use some of this in your photography as well. If you like this video you can see more just subscribe to this YouTube channel it won't cost anything and as soon as one of these videos is posted you'll be the first to know. Thanks a lot for watching until next time take care be safe and get out there and shoot something.